I have already covered a lot of recent SOTDs from awards, but somehow I missed this landing page reveal animation. A few months ago, I did a similar clip mask page reveal animation, but I received a lot of questions from people having trouble getting it to work. So in today's video, we are going to reveal this amazing page reveal animation complete with a loading counter and clip path animation. We'll be using HTML, CSS, JavaScript and GSAP to pull it off. We'll also make it responsive so the counter and sizing look great on smaller screens too. If you find this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't yet. For access to the source code and monthly website templates, check out CodeGrid Pro via the link in the description. For the next 24 hours, you can get 50% off on your first billing period. You can use the coupon code mentioned in the comments to avail the discount. Alright, let's jump into the video. Let's start by creating a section calling Hero. We'll divide this section into two parts, the preloader and the images. Next, we'll add a container where we'll dump the actual page content. For the preloader, we need to divide it into three parts, a text that says loading, the main counter and the progress bar. We'll further divide the counter into four digits. The first digit will only have 0 and 1. The second digit will have 0 to 9 and then 0 again, which will be the middle number of the counter. The third digit will also have numbers from 0 to 9, but will append more after each increment of 10 using JavaScript. The last digit won't be a number, but the percentage sign. Make sure to assign the offset class to the number 1 present inside digit 1 and 2 because the fonts we'll be using will need some adjustments regarding the spacing. Moving on to the hero images, we'll add 7 images. The website content will have a navbar and a header. In the navbar, I'll add a few text elements for the logo, some dummy text and the menu. The header will just have an h1 tag. That's pretty much it for the HTML structure. Let's get to styling now. We start by resetting the margins, paddings and setting the box sizing to border box for all elements. Next we'll set the width and height both the HTML and body elements to 100% of the viewport and hide any overflow. We also set a background color. For the images, we set their position to absolute, making them cover the entire width and height of the container. We use the object fit property to ensure they cover the container properly and set an initial clip path to hide them. Now let's style the hero section. We set its width and height to 100% of the viewport and add some padding. Moving on to the preloader, we make it twice as wide as the viewport and set its height to 100%. We fix its position to the top right of the screen and use flexbox to align its content to the bottom right. We also add some padding and a gap between elements and set a high Z index to keep it above other content. The loading text within the preloader is styled with a specific font, size and line height and is set to uppercase. Next for the container, we set its height, use flexbox for layout and style it with a specific font, size and line height. We also set up a clip path to ensure it fits within the designated area. Each digit within the counter is positioned relatively with the first and second digits slightly offset. The progress bar is also positioned relatively and we set its width to 0% height to 4 pixels and background color to black. Now for the hero images container, we position it relatively and ensure it covers the entire viewport with an overflow hidden. The website content container is positioned absolutely to cover the entire viewport and we set a Z index to place it above the hero images but below the preloader. For the navigation bar, we fix its position at the top, set it to full width and use flexbox for layout. We add some padding and style the text elements within it. Now 
The header is centered both vertically and horizontally using absolute positioning and transform properties. Finally for the header text h1, we style it with the specific font, size, weight and color. We also set it to uppercase and clip its path to ensure it appears correctly. For responsiveness, we adjust the padding, gap and font sizes for the preloader and counter on smaller screens. That covers the CSS styling, let's move on to the JavaScript. Alright, we start by listening for the DOM content loaded event to ensure our script runs after the HTML is fully loaded. First, we use GSAP to set the initial position of the navigation bar off screen by 150 pixels on the Y axis. Next, we grab references to the three digits in our counter using document.query selector. To create a cool text animation for our header, we define a function called split text into spans. This function splits the text of any element into individual spans, allowing us to animate each character separately. We call this function for the header text. We then populate the third digit of our counter with the numbers from 0 to 9 twice to ensure a smooth looping effect. We also add a final zero at the end. To animate the counter, we define an animate function. This function takes a digit element, a duration and an optional delay. It calculates the total distance the digit needs to move by multiplying the height of a single number by the total number of numbers. We use GSAP to animate the digit's Y position over the specified duration and delay. We call the animate function for each digit with different durations and delays to create a cascading effect. Next, we animate the progress bar. We first animate it to 30% width over 2 seconds. Then we animate it to 100% width and fade it out over another 2 seconds. Once the progress bar animation is complete, we hide the preloader using GSAP. For the hero images, we animate their clip path property to reveal them one by one with a slight stagger between each image. We also scale up the entire hero section for a dramatic effect. Finally, we animate the navigation bar into view and animate each span of the header text from the top to its original position. That's it for the JavaScript part. Let's see the final result in action. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.